Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z. We're doing something slightly different today. Rather than looking at a game, we're going to take a look at an application. And this is one that a few people have specifically asked me to take a look at at some point because they've uh, sometimes seen it in the background behind me. Today, we're going to take a look at Quartet, which was a 1990 release from Microdeal, and it was one of the first four channel sample synthesizers for the platform. Now, if you know the Atari ST, you'll know that the Yamaha sound chip in there is notoriously poor for its three channel sound and the fact that it can't produce particularly complex uh, envelopes to produce realistic sounds. Um, but Quartet and other pieces of software like it were designed to kind of overcome that problem by using sampled sounds, so recordings of real instruments or uh, digital recreations of instruments at the very least. Now, one thing the Atari ST did have in its favor when it came to music was MIDI compatibility. And so Quartet was designed as a sort of twofold thing. Firstly, to take advantage of the Atari ST's MIDI capability, so you could plug a keyboard into it. And secondly, to get around the limitations of the Yamaha sound chip by relying exclusively on sampled sounds rather than sounds synthesized directly by the sound chip. Now, as I say, I've had a copy of this lurking behind me for quite some time. So here it is, this is Quartet from Microdeal, the digital music machine. Here's the back, there's the back upside down in fact. <laughs> so let's have a quick look at the blurb before we see what's inside here. The power of a music synthesizer in your ST. Quartet is a full voice polyphonic music synthesizer. Being polyphonic it is the first program to actually allow full instruments to be played back at the same time because the, uh, the ST sound chip would normally limit you to three. Quartet turns your ST into a real musical quartet. It runs on a standard 520 ST and does not require any special hardware. As you become more professional, you might want to import your own sounds from Microdeal's Replay Sound Sampler and add a keyboard with MIDI connections for input of music or playback of sounds. Quartet really stands up to its name, having the ability to play back four voices simultaneously using programming techniques entirely unique to Microdeal that allow music playback at up to 15 kHz to give unrivaled sound quality from your ST. This style of sample sequencing has previously only been available to professional programmers and musicians with systems costing hundreds of times more. So yeah, this was kind of a big deal at the time of its original release. It was far from the only full channel sample sequencer that was on the market at the time. Um, there were pieces of software known as uh, sound trackers and noise trackers that were also quite popular at the time, particularly in the demo scene. But this was designed to be a little bit more accessible than um, some of those pieces of software, which kind of required a, an almost programming-like knowledge of how to put music together. Whereas this was designed to be a bit more intuitive for musicians. So inside the box, we've got a manual here, which I'll probably have by my side while we're looking at it. It's uh, it's not a super long manual, but it is it's a good 60 pages long or so. And it tells you sort of all the basic functions of the program. And there's also a couple of additional programs on the disc as well uh, that allow you to do things like edit samples, create your own sounds, add effects to them and that sort of thing. And the program comes on three floppy disks here. And among those, there's uh, sort of various different sample banks and example songs and that sort of thing that you can explore along the way. Other things that we have in the box, uh, we have a registration card here. Join our mailing list and register for purchase. Please return this postcard with your postcode. Do not affix postage stamps if posted in Great Britain. Uh, then we've got another registration card. Uh, what looks like an addendum. Uh, here we are. Yeah, so the version we got here is version 1.5, which is the stereo version of Quartet. Um, that means it was compatible with the stereo output ports on the Atari STE. So you could plug in um, hi-fi cables into those phono ports on the Atari ST, hook it up to a stereo and enjoy full stereo sound. Very exciting. Um, you can also use uh, a cartridge from uh, Microdeal called Playback, which you plug into the ST's cartridge port and that would add stereo output to non-STE models as well, which is rather cool. What else have we got? Uh, we got some promotional flyers for Replay 8 
and master sound. So it mentioned on the back of the box that uh, you could create your own sounds with Replay. Replay was a sound sampler. It had a cartridge that you'd plug into the ST and you could hook up a microphone or a stereo or something to it and record sound into your computer. Um, and master sound was actually a very similar sort of thing. Uh, but as I recall, that was designed to be a slightly simpler, lower cost solution for those who didn't maybe want to spend the amount of money that Replay cost, because Replay was quite expensive. Uh, but yeah, Master Sound offered an alternative for those uh, who wanted it, but they were both from Microdeal, so you were giving your money to the same people, whatever the case. Anyway, enough of that, let's go have a play with Quartet. Okay, here we are with the Atari ST desktop. Um, so this is the contents of the Quartet disc. Um, so you see there's a whole bunch of stuff on here. We're in medium resolution because Quartet has to run in medium or high resolution. Um, and medium resolution is how most people will probably be looking at this. Here's the README file. This disc is not protected but it is formatted 11 sections per track so that it will fit. Please back up the files you are using and use the backup version. Please don't pirate this program. If the sales aren't too disappointing to me then we'll write a six voice version and take note of your criticisms of the editor etc. I would like to see lots of PD support for this package, lots of your tunes, voice sets and demos. We're currently writing an FM synth for it. We'll stick it on the PD when we're finished. So yeah they had sort of nice big plans for this. Uh, which was good. I don't actually know how widespread its use was um, because I, I know that sort of stuff like noise trackers was very popular um, in the PD scene and especially the demo scene but I don't know how how widespread use of this specifically was um, but it was cool because it was a lot more intuitive than a lot of the noise trackers so if you're an actual musician this is a lot easier to use than a noise tracker. Uh, that said, I'm still going to need to refer to the manual as we do stuff with this. Uh, so let's have a look. Welcome to Quartet. Copyright 1989 Illusions programmers Rob Povey and Kevin Cowton. Right. Um, all right. Well, let's just have a look through the manual then. Introduction. Welcome to Quartet. I believe Quartet to be the best program of its type available. Quartet gives you a similar sound quality to that of the Amiga from your ST sound chip. There it is. That's what they were trying to achieve with this. Um, this manual is really three manuals in one. It takes you through Quartet, Voices and Digital. So the other two programs there that are for manipulating samples and creating your own sounds. We probably won't look at those today. We'll just look at the main Quartet program. Uh, loading a demo song. Let's start with that. Move the mouse to the top left hand corner of the screen and a menu should appear. There it is. This menu will act just like Gem but will disappear whenever the mouse is moved off it. Move the mouse down the menu to the load option and select it. Okay. Uh, a Gem file selector has now appeared showing a list of demonstration songs. Select the first of these and click on the OK box. Go back up the function menu and select the play option. So you can see as it's playing, the four voices are shown by these VU meters here, so you can see which voice is doing what. So as you can hear, not not bad quality at all. I mean, it's let me say it's 16 kilohertz. Um, so not exactly CD quality, but then neither was the Amiga, so... Okay, enough of that. Stop. Thank you. Right, clear all. All voices will be cleared. Right, let's have a go at putting ourselves in. Our own stuff in. <sighs> okay. Right, well, rather than trying to compose something from scratch, what I've got on hand, which I don't know if you can see, is I've got a bit of musical score here uh, from the Final Fantasy XIV soundtrack. And I just thought. Um, we might see if we can get sort of a rough approximation of that into this. Something that isn't too complicated. Now this is a reasonably easy piano arrangement that I've got here. So 
um, nothing in it is especially complicated. In fact, most of them don't seem to have more than more than four um, notes at the same time, which is ideal for our purposes. So let's pick something. Excuse me. All right, let's have a look at this one. So, first thing we need to do is we need to set our sample here um, to. All right, let's go for piano. We also need to set a time signature. So, this piece is in 3 4. And then we just start putting notes in. You can only look at one um, voice at a time. So unfortunately, you can't see a full score at once. Um, but uh, yeah, once you once you figure that out, you, you are away. All right, so let's begin by... All right, there's a note. So that first bit there, that is our, our voice change to piano. Uh, now, does it expect us to sort of leave appropriate gaps? Oh no, no, it's doing bar lines correctly, that's good. So we pop these notes in as such. Now I don't think you can do ties in this, so we're just going to have to play that note twice. Okay, let's let's just see what we've got so far. So if we go up into the menu and choose play one, that will play just this voice. And it will just loop it as you can hear a little bit fast for our purposes the actual tempo of this piece in the book is 118 115 that's near enough okay so we got our top line there let's switch to a second voice and try and add some other parts so let's let's keep it on piano for the minute um, so for the second part, we want a rest. And then, oops, now you can drag uh, notes that you've already put down, which is good. And another rest there. Now, it does seem to have got a bit confused with the bar lines here. Let's see how they sound together, though. Not right at all. Not right at all. What is wrong there? Um, very good question. Oh, I know what I've done wrong. I did a dotted quaver rest and not a uh, dotted crotchet rest. That's why that's wrong. There we go. That's better. Right. Uh, try again. Play all. Right. You'll notice that the, the first part started looping before the second half. So you just need to watch out for that. Um, so let's add these other bits. That goes down to A in the bass clef there. Play both of those now. Oh, hold on. Need to add that in as well. Right, they should both be the same length now. Oh, wrong. Keep doing play all. Play one instead of play all. Oh, 
Okay. We're starting to get something. Okay, let's go to voice number three. Uh, and this is our bass line. So let's use a different sound for this. Let's try bass two. Let's see how this sounds. Excuse me, rustling. Uh, and this is the sheet music. Oops. Yeah, you'll notice that the musical score notation in this is is very rudimentary. So it doesn't it doesn't do things like ledger lines. It doesn't do things like beaming notes together. Um, but it's it's sufficient for our purposes. It's sufficient for getting a basic piece of music put together. Ah, now uh, we, have a, we have a flat here, and I'm not 100% sure how you do sharps and flats, or indeed if you can do sharps and flats. Bear with me a moment while I look in here. Uh, and harmonic suppression, no. P for pitch, pitch change, eight. This is exciting, isn't it? Live manual reading. Um, point the mouse to where you want the third note to be. Holding down the left mouse button allows you to drag the note up and down to the correct position. Okay, that doesn't help. Okay, so it looks like you can you can put sharps in, but but not flats. So you just have to use the enharmonic uh, equivalents, basically. Uh, but how do we put in a sharp? Oh, any note can be sharpened by pointing to it and pressing the hash key. All right, so for our B flat that we want down in the bass, we actually want... Um, an A sharp. You put an A there. Point at it. Press the hash key. No. Uh. Hmm. Bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, I think I found it. Uh, so, there we go. I think that's a sharp. Uh, I also discovered that you can actually put ties in. Uh, at least I think they're ties. So if you point to this one and press... No. Point to this one and press that. I think that ties them together. Uh, so that's, that's minus on the numeric keypad. Uh, let's just see what happens with this once we put the rest of those notes in um so where are we uh doing the top notes there so that goes there and that goes there These two need to be sharps. Actually, A sharps. All right, let's see what monstrosity we've created here. Not bad at all, huh? All right, let's continue with our fourth voice just to fill in the gaps uh, again let's use the bass sound for this one 
So we want uh, a full bars rest, and then a crotchet rest, and an E, and a crotchet rest, and another crotchet rest. And then a dotted crotchet on a D. And then a quaver rest. And then some very low Bs. Uh, so F, E, D, C. Oh no, can't go any lower. Okay, uh, all right. Well, I guess we're not putting those lights in then. <laughs> All right, play. Oh, I don't. But uh, put in the rests unless we want them to loop incorrectly. Right, play for me. Okay, so that's that's the basics there. Let's put in a little bit more, just so we get a little bit more experience of what's going on. Um, I think those ties are working, wasn't they? I wasn't actually paying attention. Let's try again. They are. They're not holding for a very long time. Excuse me. They're not holding for a very long time, but they are sort of actually putting the appropriate duration in there which is something uh okay so what is next one of them it's basically the same tune again with some slightly more complicated harmonies underneath it okay so that that arrow there allows you to scroll the the stave to the side if you need a bit more um, space oops that's not the right note that's still not the right note oh we got five notes in the score here so we're gonna have to omit one that's Make sure we got the top one in there. Uh, whoops, too far. And then tie them together. Lovely. Okay, so that's another that's another four bars. So let's add in the other parts to that. So we need a quaver rest here. An A here. And a D. Um Hmm, got some fiddly rhythms here. Okay, we'll have to leave that note out for now because there's too too many notes, too many notes. Pop them in there, and then miss out the middle note of that chord. Because who needs who needs D? Who needs D's? Don't take that out of context. Um, okay. So then comes voice number three. Q. 
can we get hold on no we don't need the bottom d there we want that d and then this Ooh, got a fiddly bit of uh, tide goodness coming up come on move over so one of them tied to another one of them both of them sharp with the sharp on the wrong side as you've no doubt noticed so you tie that there and then you go down to there and then So a sharp button on the interface would have been nice or just like a, like some other modern score writing programs do it where you can just drag it up and down slightly to a sort of in-betweeny position to do a sharp but uh not complaining too much all right what is next so for this one we should be able to get that nice bottom d that should fit in there so f e d Uh, then a rest there and move over some ease and then one of them and then three of them and we can't reach the bottom B flat can we so let's just put in a full bars rest I know in proper music you'd use a semi brief rest there but uh, I don't think quartet is that advanced <laughs> all right play Right, sounded pretty good, right? Uh, let's let's try and take it to the. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and put in this whole page of music. So that's eight more bars. So we've still got this bit and this bit left to do. Let's see if we can put the, the rest of this page in because this this is quite a long piece of music otherwise. Um, but this will be a nice little project to do in this video. I am curious what this B button does. Uh, just before we go any further, I'm going to look that up. If you bear with me. Uh, Trouble is, it doesn't appear to be it doesn't appear to be a, a bit in the manual. Oh no, here we are. We come now to the box marked B next to the voice boxes. This is simply a work area. Any of the previously described editing features work on the block, but it is not played. So basically what you can do is you can, um, you can use that for cutting and pasting, basically. Um, this on its own would be pretty useless, but there are of course commands of transferring part of a voice into the block, cutting, and for copying the block into a voice pasting. So as well as composing things directly onto the voices as we've been doing, you can compose stuff in the block here, or you can cut stuff from your score into the block and then paste that back in somewhere else. So presumably somewhere there's cut and paste commands. Um, I don't know where. Not that we really need them right now, but it is interesting to, to know what these are for. Um, oh, P for paste block. Okay, so there's nothing on the interface to do that. It's a, it's another keyboard shortcut. Right. Let's finish this little project. Uh, so where are we now? Bar 8. So you go there, and then up there to A. As a musician, the, the lack of ledger lines in this is painful. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
as I say, it does the job. It does the job. It allows you to quickly and easily paint a piece of music onto the score, which for a lot of people, including myself, is is sort of the um, the most straightforward means of composing. Now, as I say, you can actually hook up a MIDI keyboard to this. If you look in the menu here, there is uh, record and polyplay functions. And that allows you to connect a MIDI keyboard to the Atari ST. Polyplay allows you to just play the samples with your keyboard. So you can use Quartet as basically a synthesizer um, based on samples. Um, or you can record directly into the, uh, into the software. Uh, where am I? F. Move over, thank you. We're getting down to getting down to semi quavers, which is the shortest length of note that Quartet can handle. I done that right. I feel like my bars don't add up properly. Oh no, that is right. I think. Hold on. Dun 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 dun. Oh, stop. Oh, there's five bars in that line. That's why. <laughs> Just getting confused. It's like that doesn't add up properly, uh, but it apparently does. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all of these all of these eight bars in in one go. So just bear with me as I do that, and you can enjoy watching me click notes onto a score, which I'm sure is very nice and relaxing and not at all dull and tedious. And if you came here expecting thrills, spills, and excitement, well, you should know better by now. <laughs> Give me a dotted minim on the correct note, please. Thank you. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six notes. Six notes. We'll have none of that nonsense here. Um, we will take the top note, however. G, A, B, C. And... C and C again, tied. Okay, that's all of the top line done. Uh, next, we need voice number two. Got some nice octave melodies going on here, so there's actually plenty to do for the voice number two on this point. Tie them together. If you're not a musician, by the way, all this is very interesting. Um, <laughs> but if nothing else, at least, at least, hopefully, it is giving you an idea of what this piece of software is all about and how it works and how it, how it might be useful, either for doing what I'm doing here, which is transcribing an existing piece of music, um, or composing your own uh, let's go for a let's skip out the middle note again and yep leave those out and pop in an E there. And a rest. And an F. Uh, and one of them. And a one of them.
Okay, it's two out of the four voices done. On to voice number three, if you please. All right, lots of fun quavers coming up for our bass line to enjoy. Oh, whoops. That's not right. Uh, so down to C there. I'm going to go for the top notes of the chords. Uh, another sharpie sharp to worry about there. The ability to put a key signature in this would have been nice. So you could just say all all Bs are flat and so on. But since it's only using sharps rather than flats, I guess that's why that's not in there. Um, nope, wrong. You can transpose stuff once you've finished it as well, though. You see there's a transpose button. You can just shift it up and down. Because all of the notes are just basically stored as computer data, you can just shift the whole thing up or down a bit, which is very nice. So if you're doing this for some sort of backing track and it turns out to be too high or too low or in an awkward key to play along with or something like that, um, yeah, you can, just, you can just change it, which is very convenient. And one of the best things about computer music is the ability to do that. Uh, Sharp there, sharp there, then just a normal A. And one of them, yep, tied to that. Uh, then another one of them. And one of them. With that one tied to that one. And we're nearly there, I promise. Right, is that 18 bars on all of them? Yes, good. <laughs> Had another horrible thought that I'd uh, got out of sync somehow. Right, nearly there. So, a whole bars rest for voice four here. Then a crotchet rest there, followed by a bit of hot E action. Uh, and I got your rest there with a bit of the D. Everybody loves a bit of the D. And the crotchet rest and the quaver rest. And we can't go low enough for those ones, so let's just leave those out altogether. With the full bars rest. Then. G with that one as a tie and then same again here on A oops and then One of them and then again we can't get down to the lowest ones we need so right i think that's it let's play it back and see what happens
Not bad, huh? So that is the first part of To The Sun from the Final Fantasy XIV soundtrack. Done in full channel sampled sound using Quartet from Microdeal. I think we'll leave that there because that's that's pretty much demonstrated what Quartet is for and how you use it. As I say, there are, there are two additional programs on the disc um, that if you just bear with me a moment, I'll tell you what they're for, but we won't go into actually using them today because they're, they're probably the more complicated parts of the program. Um, so basically, there's a program called Digital which it says, Digital is a program that allows you to manipulate samples and convert them into AVR file format, which is for um, actually loading into Quartet. Digital allows you to manipulate samples of up to 40 kilobytes on a 520ST machine or up to 64 kilobytes on a larger machine. These limitations on size are imposed by the digital filtering algorithms, which require considerable extra memory for the accurate storage of samples. This should not present a problem as samples are generally individual instruments lasting no more than a second, thus Quartet cannot use samples of more than 32 kilobytes. Uh, it's always uh, it's always kind of eye-opening to look back at uh, limitations of software like this from the past, isn't it? Okay, and the, the final piece of software on here is called Voices. Uh, so if you want to use new sounds in a Quartet song, then these sounds must all be combined into a voice set. The voice set must contain all of the sounds used in a particular song. Uh, to allow you to create a new voice set or modify existing sets, the voice set editor is provided. This program will load an existing voice set or create a new set to which samples which must be stored as AVR files, which is what you use the digital program for, can be added. Up to 20 samples can be included in the voice set, which can be up to 256 kilobytes long. And remember, they can't be more than 32k each. Um, yeah, so that's Quartet. So this, I remember having some fun with this back in the day uh, by just sort of fiddling around with it and seeing what different sounds you could create and as I say while this might sound sort of crunchy and crispy compared to uh, the sounds we can create using modern machines and modern synthesizers it's still pretty pretty impressive considering some of the horrible noises the ST comes out with under normal circumstances but yeah and having it having it full channel is a pretty big deal as well anyway um, so I've rambled on for 40 minutes on that. I hope that was interesting to those of you who've been eyeing up my copy of Quartet in the background of my uh, of my study. Um, yeah, I've been trying to think of the best way to cover this for a while, and I think obviously the best way to do it is just to just to use it and just to see how it works. So I hope that's uh, that's given you a good rundown of the basic functionality of this program. As you can see, it's fairly simple to use on a fairly basic level. As long as you have a reasonable understanding of the very basics of music theory note values and that sort of thing then you can produce some quite convincing sounds um, and then if you want to take it a bit more seriously and experiment with your own other sounds and things or things that you've recorded using replay or packs of samples that you've got from public domain libraries or that sort of thing yeah there's a lot of things you can do with this anyway i will uh, refrain from forcing you to listen to the first 18 bars of To The Sun from Final Fantasy XIV any further. And I will just say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>